tutorial video in 22.6. In this video, I'm going to do an introduction to the default story format, Arlo 3.3, 22.6. As a reminder, remember, when we work in Twine, we work in a story format. When we're writing in Twine, when we're editing passages, we're doing it through functionality provided by a particular story format. Now, when we talk about story formats, it's important to remember that many story formats consider themselves programming languages. Now, this is not true of all story formats, but many of them, and Harlow in particular, call themselves programming languages, and so we use the label that the maintainers of the story format use themselves. So let's talk a little bit about stories and using story formats. So as you can see here, I have no stories saved in Twine. I have started it up and we're sitting right here, which is the menu and nothing within this. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new story and I'm gonna just use untitled story and click create. So by default, when we create a new story in Twine 2.6, we are immediately using a story format called Harlow, the default story format. It can be a little deceiving though to understand what is the difference between what a story format is and how are we using it and what does it provide and what does all this mean. So let's start a little bit by understanding what the current story format is, a particular story when we open it within Twine, and then we'll kind of walk through what Harlow itself provides. So if we're sitting right here and we've got a single untitled passage and we've got a story, and we want to know what is the current story format of this story? Well, we can come up here to the story menu, come over to story, go down to details, and we see, oh, the current story format is Harlow 3.3.5 as of the recording of this video, and it was edited on Monday, June 19th. So, okay, we know then if we go to story details, we can see the current story format. We can also click on this link and choose other story formats to become the story format of this story. However, for right now, let's leave this as it is. So we can confirm the current story format of a story going to story details. Most of the time, however, we're not particularly concerned with that. We just want to immediately jump in and start editing, and the default story format Harlow allows us to do that. So let's talk a little bit about editing and what that means for us as provided by Harlow. So I have a single passage right here. I'm going to go ahead and double click it. And we will see that we're given two different toolbars to edit the content of this passage. The first is this right here, undo, redo, tag, size, rename, and test from here. Now this is actually provided by Twine 2.6, although it can be a little bit deceiving unless you've tried other story formats. The next line is provided by Harlow itself. And this is where we start to get into the differences between story formats. Depending on which one you're using, you may not see this second toolbar. You may in fact see a completely different toolbar or no toolbar at all, depending on what the maintainers of the story format provide for you. In this particular case, as the default story format, it provides us a toolbar right here for a number of different options. So let's kind of go through these real quick. So we can see the ones Twine 2.6 provides, undo and redo. We can look at various changes we've made to the passage. We can add tags and change the size and rename them and test from here. So we can immediately jump into testing a passage if we would like. And then we see all of these new things. Okay, so the first of which is styles. So notice we can add bold, italic, strike through, superscript, and a number of other things we've given here. Notice these also correspondingly have keyboard commands as well. So if you are a little more used to using the keyboard than the mouse, you can immediately jump in and start using those. We also see the use of different colors. Notice we can go through the colors right here. And we can also do borders, change the rotation, add lists and line items, change the alignment and columns, collapse the white space. So for example, if we have a bunch of different code and we want to have the reader perceive that as just white space, well, that's a little more of a complicated topic. We can also verbatim, so ignore any particular code that's inside and show the code rather than run the code. And we can do HTML comments. That gives us the ability to add comments to our code. And then we can mess with macros as part of the programming functionality provided by Harlow. We can do a proofreading view, which allows us to focus more on the text of a story rather than the code of a story. We can look at some coding tool tips or not. We can turn this on and off. Finally, we can do find and replace within this particular stuff. 
And if we wanted to, we can jump immediately to the manual, which would open a new tab to allow us to look at the documentation of Harlow. Now, these are many different options providing various different functionality. But what's important to remember, though, is that it's all available to us. When we open any new passage, we can immediately jump in and start using these toolbars in various ways to edit our text. So let's look a little bit about what Harlow provides. So Harlow provides this right here. When we open a passage to edit, we get this example toolbar right here and all of its various functionality. When we run a story or test a story, it is Harlow itself that is processing this material. And so we can provide a toolbar to the same functionality it uses to process it to show the various results to a reader. So let's summarize what we have here in this video. We create stories in Twine. The default story format is named Harlow, which I'm currently using. And we can confirm this by going to Story, Details, and coming down here, and I see Harlow selected right here for editing the story. And if I wanted to, I could change to a different story format and use its corresponding functionality. We also understand that many story formats, although not all of them, generally prefer to themselves as programming languages, and Harlow in particular uses this label. This is important because it means when we edit in Twine, and particularly we use the default story format, we are using a programming language. And that doesn't necessarily mean we're doing programming or doing any advanced functionality. We are engaging with a programming language that has instructions for a computer, and that's fine. Now, when we edit various passages, Harlow provides us an extra, an extra toolbar for us to use. So we can edit things like styles and colors and alignment and a number of other things. Sometimes some very advanced things we can engage with as part of functionality given to us as authors when we use Harlow to create stories. Finally, we understand that when we immediately create a story, we are interacting with Harlow as a default story format, which calls itself a programming language. And all of this functionality is available to us immediately upon creating a story. But of course, if we don't necessarily want to engage with it, we don't have to. We can create a story, we can edit passages, and if we want, we can engage with the various options provided through the toolbar or not at all. Thanks for watching.